Good evening, everyone. This is Mark Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 30th, 2022, going on 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Today, we are mainly focusing on Invest Area 91L. Is there going to be a hurricane threat this weekend? Well, let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a weather across the tropical Atlantic this evening, we noticed that here is Invest Area 91L as the sun is beginning to set across the Atlantic Basin. This has been generating a disorganized area of shadow and thunderstorm activity for the past several days and is trying to consolidate here but is going to have a very hard time doing so. If we take a look here at the visible satellite imagery, we notice that this evening we do have more in the way of showers and thunderstorms, but generally on the east and southeastern side of whatever circulation is trying to form down here. Now, it has become a little bit more compact compared to yesterday. We are not dealing with three separate areas of organized convection. Today we are actually dealing with a main central area or seemingly a centralized area uh, somewhere close to about 15 degrees north, about probably 15, 16 degrees north. And this will be moving off towards the north and west over the next several days in the general direction of the Leeward Islands. However, it will miss the island chain more than likely by a substantial margin. If you take a look here at why this system is not really strengthening and where it is expected to go and how strong it will get, let's take a look at the H4 forecast first. This is the uh, 12Z run valve for 8 a.m. this morning. This is the analysis period. We're looking at the 200 millibar wind, so we're looking at the wind at about 39,000 feet in the atmosphere. And we notice our system is just not overly that strong right now. Uh, as a result of this upper level low, what we call a tropical upper tropospheric trough. And this TUT, T-U-T-T, is basically creating some shear over top of our system right now. But there's also a lot of dry, stable air around. We can look at this in the relative humidity field that, again, we notice where the center of this upper level low is right here. And we notice that there's all of this dry, stable air off towards the west. And our storm is actually running into this dry air and so it's going to have a tough time strengthening for the next several days. And in fact, here on the H wharf, we notice what ends up happening is we start to get this lobe of uh, energy that begins to move around to the north of where the current position of the storm is. And this actually becomes the focal point, the launching point per se, for tropical cyclone formation because this eventually begins to take off here and our low migrates underneath this pocket of more moisture and more favorable conditions. If we look at the upper level environment at this time, uh, sometime by Friday, it actually seems to be a little bit more favorable here on the H4 forecast, which does allow this to become at least a little bit better organized for the time being, but there's still some shear in this area. And there also is an upper level low out here as well that will be inducing a little bit of shear over top of our system as well. So this is going to have to contend uh, with this upper level low here. And then by the time we get into Friday and Saturday, we end up dealing with a storm that is trying to become better organized, but can't really do so because there is still all of this shear over top. And again, this is basically this broad upper level low here that is going to be generating some of that shear over top of our system at this point. And so this is going to not allow for much in the way of intensification until we get into about Sunday evening uh, or really Saturday evening going into Sunday. But even at this time here on Sunday afternoon, we're still dealing with the storm feeling the effects of shear as now it is displaced from its upper level anticyclone at this point. Now the moisture field at this time too is going to be very limited. We noticed that again, most of the moisture is actually on the northern side here of our circulation. And most of that southern side doesn't really have a lot of moisture. There's a lot of browns in here indicating that we're dealing with moisture that is under about 50% relative humidity. Very dry air that is surrounding our storm could still be ingested in at, even at this time. And so this really makes the steering factor or the intensity factor rather that much more complicated. However, it does seem like we are bound to see some intensification within this area as conditions do become at least a little bit more favorable. If you take a look here at the 12Z European run, we notice the steering factor for the next several days. It's going to become very complicated and we're still not done with all of the track changes. We notice here on the 12Z European 
Right now we have a broad uh, subtropical weakness that's allowing our system to try to gain latitude for the next several days. And then eventually in the long run here, we have this trough that swings in here uh, by about the next four days. This is on Saturday. And so this overall weakness in the subtropical ridge allows our storm to get northward in the first place. And then we've got this trough right here digging in and eroding this subtropical ridge allowing our storm to gain even more latitude. Now, on today's version of the European, it does end up a little bit further towards the south. We can see that here, this actually goes pretty far south and does get quite close to the island chain here of the Turks and Caicos and Bahama. If we actually look at that here, this the center of circulation is only about 200 miles off the coast there. Whereas the previous day, this was uh, well away from there. If we actually jump back to the zero Z run here, uh, we notice that there's overall changes and it's more disorganized, but we notice that overall the trend from 12 Z to 12 Z has certainly been towards the south and west. And this is reflected here in the overall model track guidance for the next several days. Now, I will caution that this is not a set in stone guarantee because of the fact that we do not have a well-defined low level circulation at this point. So it is a little bit too hard it, or it's too early to determine where this is going to go. But we notice even some of the models like the UK MET model here do bring this pretty close here to the northern part of the Leeward Islands. However, most of the guidance today has shown that this will track pretty far north of the Leeward Islands. There is an overall spread in here of tracks, uh, track possibilities ranging from a storm that is well to the north here like the GFS shows or far to the south like the UK MET model also shows. And somewhere in between here is the two hurricane models, the HMON and HWARF, two of them, uh, the HWARF more so closely aligned with the multi-model ensemble guidance, which is the TVCN X and the TVCN. Now, as well, the 12Z European ensembles do kind of indicate much of the same thing. Again, generally more of a westerly trajectory that we've seen in the past several runs off of the European. So this has come a little bit further west. However, I'm not really convinced that this is going to get far enough west to impact uh, anywhere like Marsh Harbor, like where Dorian impacted or Florida. I don't really think we're going to see impacts to those areas. This seems to want to turn pretty far out to sea away from those areas. And even a track that took it somewhere like this would still probably find itself recurving. Um, and some of these have a very sharp curve. So here's kind of three different possible areas and kind of bringing within that the range and somewhere down in the middle here is probably where we're going to end up with a storm that could get quite close to Bermuda within the next couple of days. If we look at some of these track guidances here, that is Bermuda. And at the five day period, there is some model spread that certainly wants to try to take this close to Bermuda. So we'll have to watch for impacts there. Either way, again, it does not seem like we'll be dealing with a significant hurricane threat for the United States. However, this could be a hurricane threat for portions of Bermuda. So this will have to be something to watch as we head into the weekend. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael O'Malley. I'll be talking to you guys again some more tomorrow.